Good morning. Look, my wife's going to join me. Happy oh, it's not on yet. You've got to wait th- three seconds. I'm waiting for Tyler. Oh, there. Suzanne. Happy Thanksgiving. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Some of you are too. I got a couple waves, some big smiles. I got a hug. You got a hug from someone? From Gary. Gary's, Gary's giving out hugs. If anybody wants a hug, go see here. Gary. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, this is what, I, what we want you to do this morning. Stand up and go tell two people something that you're thankful for. Good one, Greg. All Let's right. Quick. Well, you must be thankful for lots of things. Excellent. Well, we have a few announcements. We have a couple of announcements and we have a video announcement. So let's say, say the verbal ones first. Sure. You go ahead. Okay. Adult Sunday School is starting next Sunday at 9.30. And I just confirmed with Mr. Stone that he will be teaching for the remainder of October. So next Sunday, 9.30, adults, you're welcome to come to the fellowship room. And it's going to be a good time. Yeah, a reminder that our youth Sunday school is actually happening at 9.30 uh, because lots of our youth and uh, Colin are involved during the 10.30. So if you are between the ages of seven, no, grades, seven and 12, you can join them. And it's exciting. They actually have started doing Bible quizzing. So that's pretty cool. So and then our kids Sunday school happens during the service. So if your kids are between 3 and 12, they can go to that. Excellent. Well, are we going to have a video announcement this morning? Probably. (laughs) Well, let's watch our video announcements to get caught up on everything else, and then we will uh, pray together. Good morning, Essenful Gospel, and... Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, it is Thanksgiving and I am thankful. Good, I'm glad that you're thankful. I'm (laughs) thankful too. We have so much to be thankful for. Yes. So we're at church and we have some announcements. So first thing is first, we wanted to let you know that we have another way to give here at Eston Full Gospel. This is awesome. Yeah. Progress. Yeah, we (laughs) have been able to figure out how to do e-transfers here. Excellent. And so if you would like to give by e-transfer, you can make your payee, Eston Full Gospel Church, and the email address is info at estonfullgospel.ca. Excellent. Hey, our church library is available to you, and we've had that for a number of years, but we're kind of changing how we are doing the church library. We are going to be moving to an honor system. So it's going to be open on Sundays. You can go in there, you can use the resources and return them, and we're just going to trust that you're going to do that and make use of the things that are in there. Uh, There's lots of great stuff. Yeah. Tonight at 7 o'clock, we're continuing with our Why Jesus. And so if you know anyone who is interested in faith and wants to come out, wants to know more about Jesus, come on out and we will do that together at 7 o'clock. Excellent. Hey, Greg, guess what? Potluck. On October 23rd, we're having a potluck. 
Love potluck. Excellent, yes. And following that potluck, we will be having our semi-annual meeting. And that's going to start at 1.30. And at that meeting, if you don't know, what we do is we have some verbal reports from mm -hmm. the different heads of the different areas of ministry in our church. So it's a great way to get caught up on what's going on in the church and what's coming forward. So um, come, eat, and then get informed. That's right. <laughs> well, we hope that you have a blessed Thanksgiving yeah. and you find things around you and in your life that you can be thankful for. A few, we have some different people on stage. We have Jaden and Brooklyn and Andrew, and then we also have Max and Jody. They're going to be leading us in worship uh, this morning. They're all a part of Eston College, so it's exciting to have them here with us. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings uh, this morning, so if the usher could prepare for that, and would you join me in prayer as we open our service? Jesus, we thank you today that we can be here. God, we are so thankful. We thank you for what you have done for us and how you have blessed us. God, and I pray that today as we worship, that it would be a sweet sound to you. God, that our lives would be an offering to you today. And I pray that as uh, we hear from your word and as we sing together and as we greet one another, God, that you would be exalted in everything that we do. So be with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the offering place, is place plate has passed you by. You can stand. Yeah. 
turn my eyes to you once and perhaps in my heart with the star there's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you
mindful and grateful of the gifts that you've given us. So with thankful hearts, we pour it all back to you.
that we aren't mindful and thankful for all that you've done. But here and right now, we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you that we can come close to you, that we can sing to you. Thank you for the gifts that you've given in our lives. And truly, if we were to stop and, and think of them all, it would take us all day because you're so kind and generous towards us. So with what we can, what we can remember, we say thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming for us. Thank you, thank you for your love. So we just remember, we remember your goodness towards us. We remember your kindness. We remember your generosity towards us. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Well, it is Thanksgiving. This weekend, I'm sure some of you have already had turkey, and I know some of you, it's still to come, either today or tomorrow. Maybe you could, if you wanted, you could do it on Tuesday too. Throughout um, October, oh, thank you. Throughout October, we are going through. The Values of Eston Full Gospel Church. And so, we started off in September talking about the vision of EFGC. And the, the vision is to reach those that don't know Christ and help them become mature Christians. 
There it is right there. Look at that. And so we, we talked about our vision, and now we want to talk about our values, the things that guide us, the things that direct us and point us where to go as a church body here in Eston. That's what values do. They direct us where we're going. They give us a common purpose on which way to go, on what to work towards. And we want to lay the foundation to what is important for us as a church, and this should inform everything that we do, the ministries that we have, what we spend money on, how, what we spend energy on, the values and the vision of Estenful Gospel. And so we have five values, and they should be right behind me. Last week we preached on uh, value number one, reaching the lost in our community. Number two is being a community of love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Number three is helping people understand the Bible better. Number four is ministry involvement, unleashing the spiritual gifts of people. And number five is the family. So last week I preached on the first value that we have as a church, that's reaching the lost in our community. And I hope that you thought about that. I, thought, I hope that you thought about being lost in Marlboro Mall as a three-year-old. Well, maybe not all of you, but at least I was lost. And we, we spoke on what it means to reach the lost in our community. And I believe that this is important because Jesus sees it as important. We talked about a lost coin and a lost sheep and a lost son, right? And how Jesus sees those things as, as value. They have value. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been searched for. And so we talked about how Jesus values the lost. And it was a high priority for Christ. And for us, it should also be a high priority. If we didn't have that one on our list of values, I'd be concerned. And so today, I want to look at our second value. Value number two is being a community of love, acceptance, and forgiveness. Now, as I look at this value, I see that there are three words there. Love, acceptance, and forgiveness. And while they're three separate words, they work together to create a cohesive unit. And so we want to talk about these three characteristics today. And that they are things, they are characteristics that are markers of those who walk with Christ. I want to look in the book of John chapter 8. I, I put these little blue tabs in my Bible so it's easy for me just to open it up while you guys search. It's on page 868. You can use the Pew Bible in front of you, or your own Bible, or your phone. I'm using the New Living Translation, but as we open up, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today that we can be here. God, we have so many things to be thankful for. God, as we hear from your word this morning, I pray that it would reach into our hearts, that you would uh, just shed light on things that in our life that maybe we don't like having light shed on. And God, I pray that you would help us to walk out in wisdom and love the things that you're teaching us each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're going to read out of John 8, and we'll read verses 1 to 11. We want to see these three qualities laid out in how Jesus responds to a person. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something that they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down 
and wrote in the dirt with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, but let those let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. So we've got this story in the book of John. And this woman's been brought before Jesus. And I want you to look at how this unfolds. A woman caught in the act of adultery. Think about that. A woman caught in the very act of adultery. In a vulnerable situation. She's dragged before Jesus, thrown before this court of public opinion. The humiliation and shame that this woman must feel. And where is the adulterous partner? The Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they, they know what the law says. They've lived with this their whole lives. They've, they've been taught this since they were young. They know the religious law back and forth. They know it better than anyone else. And according to Leviticus and Deuteronomy, they've actually not followed the religious law by not bringing the adulterous partner. So this, this trial is kind of, it's, it's kind of being set up as a trap as we see, as we read. And it's kind of a mockery. They're trying to trap Jesus into saying something that would incriminate himself. If he told them not to stone her, they would, uh, they would have said, Jesus, you're violating the law, the law of Moses, and therefore you are a false teacher. And if he had said, okay, that's fine, you know what? Stoner. Then they would have gone to the, the Romans, the Roman authorities, and said, this man, Jesus, he's, he is handing out executions. And that's not his job. That's not even our job as religious leaders. That is only the Roman government's job. So you should arrest him because, you know what? He's not following your law either. Because Jews were not permitted to carry out their own executions. So nothing about this story up to now has any resemblance of love, acceptance, or forgiveness. You would agree with me on that, right? It's about who is right and who is wrong. Not for righteousness sake, but for self-righteousness sake. And they demand an answer from Jesus. But knowing the hearts of the people around him, he answers with wisdom and grace as he doodles in the dust. Now, if this were me in this situation, I wouldn't be doodling in the dust because I'm not a very good doodler. I would be I would be looking to those who are old and wise among us for a good answer. I would be thinking, okay, I need a peaceful end to this mess. Because I'm just human, I'm carnal, I'm usually, the reason I want a peaceful end is so I look good. Right? Jesus Crouching down in the dirt says, All right, let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Okay, whoever's sinless among you, yep, you go first. Throw the stone. 
Meanwhile, I'm over here somewhere trying to ask for advice so that I can look good. Jesus says, you know what? Whoever is without sin, throw the first stone. And you know, even in saying that, it's also like saying, you know what? If you have sin in your life, if you have also sinned, maybe you could come and stand up here with this woman so you could be stoned too. But Christ answers in such a way is that he is the only one who is able to cast that first stone. He is the only one who is able to bring judgment on her. And one by one, they slip away. The oldest, and then the youngest. Until it's just Jesus and the woman left. I find it interesting that the oldest leave first. Is that because they, they know they've got a lifetime of knowing that they're wrong? <laughs> As I'm getting older, I know I'm wrong way more frequently. Ask my kids. And the, young, the younger ones are just a little bit more haughty, a little more impulsive. At the end, it's only Jesus and the woman. And Jesus looks from his doodling in verse 10 and says, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? She's like, No, Lord. And Jesus says, Neither do I. Go and sin no more. Jesus, I do not condemn you. There's love, and there's grace, and there's acceptance, and there's forgiveness pouring out in those words. When people are only looking out for themselves, and Jesus says, you know what, I've got you. I love you, I accept you, I forgive you. And so how does this relate to the values at Essen for Gospel. In the book of Colossians, verses 3, sorry, verses 3, chapter 3, verses 12 to 14, it says this. Since God chose you to be a holy people, to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. This, this passage starts by saying that God chose us, and in response to that calling, we are to clothe ourselves in these attributes. We are supposed to be covered in love and mercy and humility. We're supposed to be covered in gentleness and patience. And these things will identify us with Christ. So when Paul is writing to the church in Colossae, he's also, it's also to us, for us to take to heart to show that we are followers of Jesus. Love is always the biggest. It's the last thing he kind of says. He says, and clothe yourself in love. Because love guides all of our actions. And it's good to know because we, we must love one another. And in 1 John 4 it says, Love one another because love comes from God. Love one another because love comes from God. So when we're supposed to clothe ourselves in love, it means we are supposed to reach out to those. It 
in the account with the woman, Jesus shows her nothing except her love. While everyone around her is showing her contempt and disdain, Jesus shows her love. It's love that guides us through mercy and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. And it brings all those things together. Love helps lead us in walking out these things. Estival Gospel is to be a place of acceptance. And, you know, when we just accept people, just accept people and all that they are, without looking at how it impacts the world around them, Jesus could have just said, neither do I condemn you, and that's it. But he says, go and sin no more. He says, You have been doing this. Now turn around and do that. Acceptance has to be covered in love. Otherwise, it just ends up being a greasy grace type of acceptance. But acceptance needs to be, as a value, an understanding that, you know what? I haven't made it, and you haven't made it. Let's walk together here. You're at a different stage, and I'm at a different stage. But let's go together, walking towards Christ. I'll make allowance for you, and maybe you'll make allowance for me. Too often in life we have caveats for acceptance. I'll accept you if and when. Jesus never said, fix your life, and then I will not condemn you. And we said, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. There was an acceptance from Christ, but there was a call for her to action. A call for her to respond to that acceptance. And each one of us, we have been accepted by Christ, and it's our job to accept those around us and have them call and have them respond to the call of Christ. Next is forgiveness. Paul in the Colossians verse says, we must forgive others. I came across the story this week. Two little brothers, Harry and James, had finished a supper and were playing until bedtime. Somehow Harry hit James with a stick and tears and bitter words followed. Charges and accusations were still being exchanged when their mother prepared them for bed and she said, Now, boys, what would happen if either of you died tonight and never had the opportunity to forgive one another? James spoke up. Well, okay. I'll forgive him tonight. But if we're both alive in the morning, he'd better look out. (laughs) How often do we hold on to our grudges and choose not to forgive? Paul points out that forgiveness is extended to us by Christ, just as it was to this woman. And in Romans 8, Paul says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not while we got our lives together, Christ died for us. While we were already perfect. No, while we were still sinners. While we were still dead in sin, lost and wandering, Christ forgave us. We had a power failure back there, and now I have no idea what time it is, but that's why I have a watch and a phone here now. If you look back there, you'll see a glowing clock, which should read 1123, but it's 1206. I've kept you for over a half an hour longer. Please forgive me. (laughs) Oh, no. But Christ extended forgiveness to us, to each one of us. And we need to walk in that same forgiveness. We need to walk in in the way that we forgive others and that we point others to Christ in forgiving others. 
Love, acceptance, and forgiveness are Paul, qualities that Paul encourages us to walk in. In his book, Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis wrote this. Do not waste your time bothering whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you did. As soon as we do this, we find one of the great secrets. When you are behaving as if you loved someone, you will presently come to love him. If you injure someone you dislike, you will find yourself disliking him more. If you do him a good turn, you will find yourself disliking him less. As values of Essential Gospel Church, my prayer is that we would be a community, a community that loves, forgives, and accepts each person that we come in contact with. Each day we come in contact with different people. How are you at loving and accepting and forgiving people? How am I? Do I treat people like Christ did with this woman who was caught in the very act of sin? Or am I more like one of the Pharisees of the religious teachers? And I know I want to live out what Paul is saying, but how often do I th only think of myself? As a church, my desire for myself and for us and for us as a body is that we would be a community that loves and forgives and accepts each person we co come in contact with. And my hope is that these qualities would epitomize us as a church, and that they would direct our way forward. This is a value because we want it to direct the way we go. We want it to direct how we interact with people as a church and as individuals in our daily lives. We don't just have these things so that Greg has a sermon topic to preach for the month of October although it is helpful. No, we want to be like Christ. We want to walk these values out, living like Christ. And so this week, Thanksgiving, we have so much to be thankful for. And I pray that you would walk these values out in your families, with your friends, with your coworkers that we would be a community of love, forgiveness, and acceptance, that you would be a person who is noted and marked as someone who's a person of love, forgiveness, and acceptance. And they would know that you are a follower of Jesus, not because you come to church on Sunday. But because these are your values. And that we wouldn't just be known as the big church on the south end of town, but as people who walk these things out. So this Thanksgiving weekend, look for opportunities to walk these values out in your life as we walk them out here in our community together. Will you stand with me? We're going to pray, and I'll dismiss you. And if anybody needs prayer for anything, I'll stay up here for a few minutes. But let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you today that you were the perfect example, the perfect example for us to follow. And God, while we, it's, we fail, there's grace. And we thank you that you continually pour out your love on us. That even when we stumble, you are quick to forgive and welcome us back into your arms. So God, I thank you today that we can celebrate what you've done for us. That we can be thankful for everything that you've done for us and how you've blessed us. And how we have a relationship with you. And God, I pray that as a church, we would look at the, those around us who are lost. 
God, that we would look at our community around us, those who are broken, and that we would see where you want us to reach in to those places. And God, that you would use us. We thank you today that you love us. I pray that we would be a conduit for that love here in Eston. God, I pray as we go uh, separate ways today that you would uh, bless family time together, time with friends. And Lord, that we'd be able to say that we are so thankful for how you've blessed us. God, be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pray that you have a terrific Thanksgiving, that you're able to spend some meaningful time with family and friends and different loved ones, and uh, pray that you have a blessed week. Our service is dismissed.